In 2021, McLaren will rekindle its relationship with Mercedes after a six-year intermission, following three disastrous years with Honda before an upturn in fortunes with Renault, which resulted in fourth and third in the past two Constructors' Championships. But the team's decision to cast away from Renault will bring it into a second stint of the famous McLaren-Mercedes partnership, one which lasted 20 seasons in Formula 1 and yielded its most recent taste of championship-winning success back in 2008. McLaren ruled the roost in the late 1980s and the first part of the 1990s with an iron fist, but its grip on the championship was loosened by Williams' technological prowess, and Honda departed F1 at the end of 1992 after McLaren failed to win a title for the first time since 1987. Having been forced to use Ford engines for 1993 with the stipulation that they would remain a few steps behind the works Benetton team, McLaren still managed to win five races despite a large deficit to Renault in the power stakes. Having looked set to switch to a works Lamborghini deal, McLaren then decided to join forces with Peugeot for 1994, but their alliance lasted only one year thanks to an engine that would frequently like to spontaneously combust, an added politics brought on from Peugeot's involvement. It was a year of engine changes, McLaren swooped for Mercedes, whose engines were produced by Ilma, and had previously supplied Sauber in both F1 and endurance racing. Sauber picked up the Ford contract, while Benetton ditched the American mark for Renault. McLaren had also bolstered its 1995 cast with another big name, Nigel Mansell, after title sponsor Marlborough asked for a world champion driver. Mick Hakkinen was retained for another season, having managed fourth in 1994 despite the Peugeot shortcomings. 1995's MP410 was certainly distinctive. McLaren raised the nose to improve the flow to the car's underside, which ended in a sharp point. Doing so aimed to negate the loss of downforce enacted by the new technical regulations, which mandated a stepped floor and an increased ride height to reduce the speeds of the car, a legacy of IS and Senna's fatal accident at Imola. There was also an engine capacity change from 3.5 litres down to 3 to further inhibit the amount of power. Having also made an entirely new chassis to fit F1's new safety requirements, it became apparent that Mansell couldn't fit in the car. Early on, McLaren's resources were spent on building a car that could fit the world champion's frame, with test driver Mark Blundell taking the seat in the opening two rounds. Aerodynamically, the MB410 had some innovations. The central wing attached to the rear of the engine cover was in many ways a precursor to the T-wing and shark fin combination seen in 2017. But there was an imbalance between the aero output and the aero efficiency of the car, which meant the McLaren was still firmly some way off from Benetton, Williams and Ferrari. We had just barked up the wrong tree, recalls Henri Durand, then McLaren's head of aerodynamics. We had a very different set of regulations to work on, in hindsight we probably should have started the project earlier. But the Mercedes was a great engine, Mario Illion and the team did a wonderful job. Because the regulation change was so drastic, we had lost so much downforce. We were all looking for downforce and not necessarily efficiency. But how did the car perform on the battlefield? Hakkinen and his new McLaren started in 7th in the Brazil season opener, two spots ahead of Blundell as the pair was separated, ironically, by Eddie Irvine's Peugeot-powered Jordan. The duo finished 4th and 6th, although Hakkinen was briefly promoted to 2nd after winner Michael Schumacher and runner-up David Coulthard were excluded from the race results for fuel irregularities. On appeal, their results were reinstated, but from McLaren's standpoint, it was an encouraging start to life with the Mercedes engines. The follow-up round in Argentina was less auspicious. Although Hakkinen had darted into third from fifth on the grid, a first lap pile-up instigated by a spinning Jean Alesi forced a restart. Hakkinen then clipped Irvine on the second start, going out on the spot, as Blundell later succumbed to an oil leak. But Mansell was finally back for his long-awaited first race with McLaren for the San Marino Grand Prix at Imola, in which the team could make a change to boost the mid-wing. Another legacy of the 1994 season was a slot in the airbox, to reduce the engine power by restricting the amount of airflow entering the intake. Now that ruling was eventually rolled back on, as the reduction in engine capacity had proven to be enough, which McLaren was anticipating to get the most out of its engine cover design. Durand explains on paper that the mid-wing paired with the vent on the engine cover would have been an overall advantage, and increased the pressure on the top surface, but while the design may have produced extra downforce on the straight, in the corners it wasn't very efficient in comparison, something that he admits he didn't consider as much. For his return, Mansell qualified a respectable ninth, and Hakkinen started sixth. Mansell started poorly and fell back to 14th, but climbed to be in contention until a late clash with Eddie Irvine shuffled him back down to 9th, as Hakkinen rescued a 5th place finish. Mansell's McLaren career lasted just one more round at Spain, 
After complaining about the MP410's handling all weekend, he called it a day after just 18 laps and walked out on the team immediately after. So Blundell was recalled after that and was arguably a more consistent presence in the points than Hakkinen, who had picked up the big ticket results with two second place finishes until mechanical and electrical problems hindered the rest of his season. His second place finish at Monza underlined the potential of the Mercedes power plant, but the Finn season was briefly interrupted by appendicitis, with British F3 champion Jan Magnussen replacing Hakkinen for the Pacific Grand Prix at Aida. On his return, Hakkinen was in resurgent form at Suzuka, starting in third and finishing second, just 20 seconds down on winner Michael Schumacher. Hopes of finishing the season with a flourish were dashed at Adelaide, however, as Hakkinen suffered a puncture in qualifying and crashed heavily, suffering from a fractured skull and a trapped airway. An emergency tracheotomy at the side of the circuit saved Hakkinen's life, and McLaren was forced to race the Australian Grand Prix with just Blundell. In a race dominated by Damon Hill, who gained a two-lap buffer to second place, Blundell claimed fourth to bring the MP410 service to an end. We were not necessarily as reactive as we should have been, Durand admits. When you go on the wrong path, it's very difficult to recover. On the other side, we had Magic Mika, a great race team which managed to squeeze every bit of juice out of this fruit and effectively got some very respectable results. Although McLaren's start to life with Mercedes had been difficult, perhaps the phrase under pressure diamonds are formed had proved true, and later in the decade McLaren and Mercedes won two titles with Hakkinen. All in all, the MP410, despite its flaws, laid the groundwork for a highly productive partnership. As McLaren begins its new chapter with Mercedes in 2021, it shouldn't be disheartened by any troubled starts. Indeed, it has precedent. From little acorns, mighty trees grow. Music